Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. The title of our work is Probabilistic Typing Inversion for Adaptive Quantitative System Blade Mapping. Quantitative System Mapping, QSM, is a, is a normal image contrast in magnetic resonance imaging. It measures the underlying tissue apparent magnetic stability, which is able to quantify specific biomarkers such as iron, calcium, and gadolinium. This equation shows the QSM4 model in image space, where chi is the tissue stability, B the magnetic field, D the dipole kernel, and N the measurement noise. Dipole convolution can also be defined in case space, where capital D is the free transform of the image space dipole kernel. We can estimate the magnetic field from multi echo gradient echo phase data with high precision. But the problem is how to recover suspended chi from B based on this image model. This is because the dipole inversion is intrinsically u post. This u postness is shown in this figure. It shows the zero surface coin of a dipole kernel in K space. So the K space point in this coin surface causes the division by zero when the deconvolution is performed in K space. So here is a typical stability map of the brain. After forward dipole convolution, a field map B is generated. The question is how to do the inverse problem from field B to stability chi. Here are two representative methods to solve QSM inverse problem. The first one is called Cosmos. Cosmos uses multiple orientation scans to eliminate all the zeros in the K-space coin surface. And because of this zero elimination, the forward and system matrix will be better conditioned and direct inversion method in K-space can be applied. Cosmos has been used as the golden standard QSM for the last decade. So however, the, the drawback of Cosmos is that it requires at least three orientation scans, which is infeasible for clinical use. Another method called MEDI was proposed to solve QSM inverse problem with single orientation scan. So MEDI defines a morphology related orientation term to regularize the inverse problem. So this regulation term can also be regarded as the prior distribution of stability under the maximal e posterior framework, MEP framework. I D prior penalize the gradient of three, three spatial directions outside the brain to surprise the image space shrinking artifact introduced by the dipole inversion. Given the prior and likelihood distribution, can we do one step further to solve the whole posterior distribution of chi? If so, we will quantify the uncertainty in the solution and may have some clinical implications. So to do that, some approximate inference methods can be used, such as Markov G Monte Carlo, version inference, etc. But still, it needs to run on each subject. So here comes the question. If the pattern from V to posterior distribution chi is recoverable, then rather than solving the posterior distribution approximation for each B, can we learn to approximate a general distribution P data of chi conditioned on B for any given B? To do that, we introduced a set of parameterized distributions Q chi conditioned on B with parameters Psi, and we learn Psi on a cohort of subjects to approximate the true data distribution. People call this strategy amortized optimization. The modeling process consists of two steps. The first step deals with Cosmos dataset. Since Cosmos provides the golden standard QSM based on multiple orientation scans, we can treat the Cosmos field stability data pair as the samples from the true posterior data distribution Given a large amount of samples, they define the empirical data distribution as follows. 
where the indicator function equals one if the condition satisfies and zero otherwise. We then use the KR divergence as the loss function to measure the distance between the parameterized approximate data distribution and the empirical data distribution, which is equivalent to the following loss function, where the first term computes the expectation of the negative log for serial with respect to the empirical distribution. And the second term is entropy of the empirical distribution. Since the second term doesn't include the learnable parameter per se, only the first term is used during parameter learning. Notice that training with this loss function is equivalent to maximizing the parameterized prostate distribution given the data, data set. Statistics tells us that if the model family is, is flexible enough, and if enough data is given, then solving the maximal posterior problem will use the parameters that generalize to unseen cases. The second step is our MADI data set. So for MADI data set, we only use the single orientation measure field without any corresponding golden standard stability. Besides, we also have the stability likelihood distribution, which depends on the forward dipole convolution kernel and the measurement noise property. And we also have the prior distribution despite the front MRI image morphology. We then use the care divergence again to measure the distribution similarity. After derivation, this care divergence can be decomposed into two terms that depend on the prior, the likelihood, and the approximate posterior distribution. Minimizing this care divergence across the MADI train data set, we get the amortized formulation, which is so called amortized variational inference. So the first term of the KR divergence can be interpreted as the regulation term, which requires that the approximate posterior distribution to be close to the prior. And the second term maximizes the, the, the expected log likelihood distribution of the measure of field with respect to the approximate posterior in order to preserve the data fidelity. Notice that training with this loss function requires that the gradient be bipropagated through the expectation operator, which can be achieved using Monte Carlo sampling with reparameterization trick. Here is the sketched network architecture for the approximate posterior distribution, where we uh, assume that the covariance matrix of susceptibility is diagonal. This network is inspired by the widely used UNET architecture. This, the extension here is to have one encoder and dual decoder architecture, where each decoder will output the mean or variance map from the same meeting space. Escape connections between encoder and decoders are also applied here for spatial information sharing and better gradient propagation. Two loss functions are used for Cosmos and MEDI dataset as described in the previous slides. For KR divergence loss function on MEDI dataset, Monte Carlo sampling with reparameterization trick is applied. The network was firstly print trained on Cosmos dataset with 3D patches extracted from the whole brain volume. Our in house Cosmos data consists of seven subjects, which have been five orientations. This pre train network was called PDI, which stands for Probabilistic Type Inversion Network. After obtaining the pre train PDI, domain adaptations were deployed on different MADI datasets using amortized variational inference, where the whole brain was fed into the network during domain adaptation. We worked on two types of patient dataset, the multiple sclerosis dataset and average dataset. The adapted network is called P perverse type of inversion with variational inference, PDI-VI, in the following experiments. 
For Cosmos test data, we compare PDI with MEDI and two other deep learning methods, QSM then and fine. The, the reconstruction map and error map shown here. You can see that the variance map of PDI matches the error map with high uncertainty or error locating at, at the status of status and globus pallidus. Here are some quantitative metric. PDI gives slightly better results com compared to MEDI and QSMNet, meanwhile uh, achieves faster inference time on uh, in GPU than fine. Here are the split maps of two test cases in MS lesion dataset. Lesions indicated by the red arrows near the ventricle were underestimated in PDI, but were recovered in PDI-3i. Since these lesion patterns were not seen during Cosmos print training, suboptimal reconstructions could happen when applying a print trained model on new test dataset deviating from the trained dataset. Domain adaptations like PDI-3i and FINE help correct such, correct such generation error with different strategies. Similar to MS Legion dataset, we we'll apply the print trained PDI on the hemorrhage test dataset. Underestimation issue also happened inside the lesion. And this underestimation was also recovered after amortized variational inference. This underestimation might result from that such pathology was not encountered during training. High uncertainties inside the hemorrhage, as shown here, were, were consistent with the high local field noise level, which was approximately proportional to the underlying susceptibility value. The proposed training strategy with MEDI dataset resembles the unsupervised variation auto encoder. Here, the two are put together and compared. In VAE, the auto encoder architecture is used to learn both the approximate inference network, the encoder, for latency space Z condition on, on input data X, and the generative model decoder of X given Z. Data X is expected to be reconstructed from Z. Evidence of lower bound elbow is used to train the encoder and decoder together, where the optimal encoder of elbow is a is a true posterior distribution of Z given X, at which point the elbow is tight and equals the log density of data X. In the proposed PDI architecture for QSM problem, the approximate posterior distribution is also a neural network encoder from the input field B to sensibility chi, whereas the decoder is no longer a neural network and doesn't need to be trained. Instead, it's the likelihood distribution from the forward dipole convolution kernel with additive Gaussian noise. The loss function remains the same if we treat the output stability as the latent variable in VAE. So the proposed PDI combines the modeling principle in VAE with the domain knowledge from medical physics. To sum up, in this work, we built a neural network parameterized distribution, which used the posterior distribution of susceptibility given the input local field. The network was print trained on Cosmos dataset by fitting to the empirical distribution and then adapted to different domains using amortized variational inference. Our method achieves adaptive reconstructions of susceptibility with uncertainty estimation. Future works include building the parameterized distribution using more expressive model family, such as invertible neural network, since the inversion of the network should be the forward dipole convolution process, which may be useful to regularize the network training. Another thing is to learn the prior density of susceptibility instead of the handcrafted MEDI prior. Deep generative models, such as autoregressive network and version autoencoder, could be useful to achieve that. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready for questions.